Welcome again to Interesting Ideas. That new sounder is actually the BBC PIP sounder that they use for many, many years along with their other themes. And so I'm capturing these a little watch out, wake up, pay attention sounders. And I thought that on this Sunday evening, I'd make that a part of the program for you and me. Because it truly is a wake up message or story that I have uh, taken from others and would just simply like to share with you on this Sunday. It was uh, today, this fourth Sunday in Lent, for those of us in the Christian tradition who celebrate that, and the reading for the day in many of the churches was a very familiar story. It's the prodigal son. And of course, many of you know the story is, the guy says, hey dad, I want my money. He runs off wastes his life, wastes his money, comes back to, hey, won't you just let me be a guy on the farm? And of course, the story is one of incredible uh, celebration, reunification, and yet, just like human nature, the older son says, it ain't fair. And of course, it's not. Well, what I'd like to do today is on this time where we're trying to reflect on our life and be able to do something new and different. I'm going to go to one of my favorite persons. His name is Stephen Pressfield, and he's a writer and a creative, and uh, he's been a bit of a mentor to me in terms of from long distance, and even he answered some nice emails, and once I even uh, suggested something that uh, he thought that might be a good idea. So today, what I'd like to do is go back in time and read for you, with of course my own little intonations and comment, what was called The Prodigal Son and the Artist's Journey. The Prodigal Son and the Artist's Journey, and wow, look for all the life lessons that might be for you and for me. You will find truly it is full of interesting ideas. And the program begins right now. And Stephen writes, I remember when I was a kid reading the biblical story of the prodigal son. I never really got the point of it. I found myself siding with the elder son. <laughs> hey, Dad, what's the story? My younger brother takes his inheritance early and bolts from the farm. He swaggers into the big city, blows every penny gambling and fast living, and then comes crawling home begging for forgiveness. The kid's a bum. Yet here you are, Pop, breaking out the fatted calf and rejoicing at your wayward child's return. When I, the responsible one, have been here all along, busting my butt to make this farm pay. It ain't fair. It ain't fair. I didn't get the father's explanation either. My son was lost, but now he is found? Yeah, <laughs> what does that mean? I was thinking uh, of this the other day, and I realize the story is the perfect expression of the hero's journey, the artist's journey metaphor. The prodigal son, his life is one of dissolution. His adventures in the flesh pots of the wicked city was his hero's journey. Yeah, he left the ordinary world, crossed the threshold into the inverted world. He encountered enemies and allies. He suffered. Finally, he hit bottom. He did what the hero classically does. He returned home. But not as the same person he had been when he left. His ordeal had changed him. Uh, he came back, whether he knew it or not, bearing a gift for the people. So, Consider the father in the story. Who is he? He's God? Maybe the self? Maybe the soul? The muse? Take whichever one works for you right now. I'll stick with God. 
He understands, even if the elder son doesn't at first. When the father considers his younger son return at last to the place from which he set out, he reckons three things. First of all, the younger son will never leave again. The lad has sowed his wild oats. He's learned his lesson. The temptations of diversion and empty self-amusement no longer hold any allure to him. So, the younger son has found, has begun to find his true identity, who he really is. The youth knows where he belongs now. He has shed a thousand alternative identities. He has come home in the deepest and most telling sense of the phrase, come home. The Bible story doesn't tell us what happened after happily ever after, but uh, let's venture an educated guess. Two months after the son returns home, he comes to his father and he says, Pop, much as I enjoy uh, tending the sheep and the goats, you know the real area I'm drawn in to is to, I know, the olive groves. I don't know why, but I have a feeling I can make them grow better. That bare, stony patch up on the hill, would you let me plant some seedlings there and see if I can make them flourish? Fast forward 20 years later. The prodigal son has become the olive whisperer of the entire province. Grovers come from miles around to learn his secrets of cultivation and propagation and care and tendance. In other words, he has found his true identity, his true calling. He has located his gift. He has become himself to the benefit not only of his own life and that of his wife and kids. Yeah, sure, he found a nice girl and got married. But to the whole farm, including the share owned by his older brother. The younger son's hero journey ended when he hit bottom in Sin City and came home to the farm. Yeah, at that point, his artist's journey began. And of course, the family in the story is a metaphor for you and me and for every single individual. The father is the soul, the muse, the self, God. Each son is a part of the whole. The stay-at-home, hard-working brother and the wild child who crossed the threshold to the inverted world and lived out his saga of resistance before finally identifying his true journey and then beginning to live it. If you'll forgive me for quoting myself, here's a passage from my book, Turning Pro, the chapter entitled, Three Cheers for the Amateur Life. Before we begin ruthlessly deconstructing the amateur life, Let's pause for a moment to give it its due. The amateur life is our youth. It's our hero's journey. No one is born a pro. You got to fall before you hit bottom. And sometimes that fall can be a hell of a ride. So here's to blackouts and to divorces, to lost jobs and lost cash and lost self-respect. Here's to time on the streets. Here's to years we can't remember. Here's to bad friends and cheating spouses. And to us, too, for being guilty of being both. Becoming pro in the end is nothing grander than growing up. And here's to you, if you're reading this, and your own term and time of prodigality. Don't shortchange it. It's your initiation, your self-initiation. You paid for it, and it's yours. Keep it. It's okay to flash it back from time to time while you're 
out there with your sons and daughters tending the olive trees on that once bare and stony patch that is now flourishing. You see, Dad understands it. He always did. And so in the end does your elder brother. Thank you, Stephen Pressfield. And as another master storyteller would say, hey, let him who has ears, let him hear. Just an idea, an interesting idea for your thought and consideration as we all live through the twilight zone of our lives. And we are in a mess of a time and we're seeking how we can make the, the best of the times. And may we be blessed with such wisdom that comes from above so that we too can be just as he was, a man who found himself, found the true father, and found a way to serve others. I'm Stan Houston. This is Interesting Ideas. And there we go. And once again, many, many thanks to uh, the composer of the story, that spirit force, and to that storyteller who told one of the best stories ever on planet Earth, the story of the prodigal son. It's his story, it's your story, and indeed, it's my story. So, there you are. Hey, reach out to me. We are trying to make Interesting Ideas, a program where uh, Monday through Friday we take about two or three, maybe four minutes for a little uh, short pop-off podcast. And here on the weekends we uh, extend it just a little bit. We're going to ask you to be a part of the uh, stories we tell and the interesting ideas we share. So reach out to me at stanhusted at gmail.com. stanhusted at gmail.com. We would be grateful if you'd recommend interesting ideas to others. And please keep in mind that uh, since we've been through the agony and the ecstasy, the best of times and the worst of times, there's probably a chance that uh, in our many years of uh, falling down and perhaps getting up, both in life and in business, I think we can be helpful and useful to you. We uh, have, again, What It Takes Radio. Dot com. <laughs> what it takes radio is at witradio.com and that's how we're going to help you tell your story and share your wisdom and share your truth just like Stephen Pressfield does in his storytelling and in his podcasting. He is telling a story which not only reflects how he has changed but how others can be changed and how he knows that at the very end he left the world a better place than when he came into it. May that be said of all of us. Once again, Stan Houston at gmail.com. Stan Houston at gmail.com. Take care. We'll see you again on Interesting Ideas. Mm-hmm.